What's going on everybody? James Jackson here back again with another video. If you're new to my channel, I do tips, tricks, news, and reviews for the film and video making industry. And if you like this channel, please help us support this channel by subscribing, hitting that like, because all that does help out with the algorithms. But also, if you love the content here, leave a super thanks. Or you can go support us at Selfy with some of our digital content there as we are now no longer accepting advertisements from others. So this content is made exclusive for you and supported exclusively by you. So hopefully you guys love the channel here and continue. And today we're going to be talking about the GH6 again, but I want to talk about one of my favorite ways in terms of color grading it. Now, since I've got the GH6, I've been loving it, especially Vlog in the Vlog Dynamic Range Boost Mode. But today I am going to be talking about how I love using a specific way and that is using it in Kodak 2383. If you're not familiar with this, this is like Hollywood industry standard of converting digital content to emulate film. It is the standard, you've seen it in a lot of films, especially if you've seen any of JJ's films. So many famous directors like Quentin Tarantino, Christopher Nolan, Denis Villeneuve, they all typically convert their digital films into their digital cameras using this film print known as Kodak 2383. It is like, that's just one of the things that people love about it. It, auto, it helps easily go into the orange shield and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Now, everybody has sort of done their own versions. Some people have, have done it certain ways and I personally haven't liked any of the ways that they've done it, but today I'm gonna show you the way I have done it. I wanna show you two ways. One is where you could do it right in DaVinci Resolve and it doesn't matter if you have the free version or the studio version, you can do it this way, and to me, it's one of the best ways to do it. However, I'm also going to show you another way using the plugin Dehancer, uh, especially with the upgrade that came with that. If you know, if you've been to my channel, I absolutely love Dehancer, and I've actually made a tutorial about it, so definitely check that video out. I'll leave it somewhere in the description up here, in the pop-up here. But let's not waste anybody's time. Let's dive right into this and show you how to get this done. So now we are in DaVinci Resolve. Uh, right now I'm actually in Resolve 18. I'm in the beta version. So uh, there's some things that I love about this, but this will be in another video. So keep that, an eye out on that. But today I'm gonna show you, I got some clips here of the GH6 um, that we're going to test. And I'm actually going to use uh, this one because we got somebody here with skin. Uh, this is also, uh, this is also my sister. So right now it's, it's Vlog. The levels are maybe a bit overexposed, but we'll find out. So let's add some LUTs. I like to add some spaces. So this is the way you can do it eternal, uh, internally using Resolve. Again, this is completely free. You can get it on the free version. It's an easy way to do it. So most way people, and if I remove myself from here real quick, so if I was to go to the film looks and I would try to add, so as you can see at the bottom, these are Kodak 2383, uh, 60 would be the neutral. If I tried to add that, and then if I was to try to uh, blow this up to full screen, it looks, you know, it looks all right. It looks decent. And this is just off of v, going off of Vlog, but it, this is not how it's really designed to look. It, it, it looks okay. So the way you would do it is basically you would have to use a color space known as Cineon. Now the way you would do it, because this is Vlog, we would have to put in our input colors, which is Panasonic Gamma and then Panasonic Vlog. And this takes it to right here. And like I said, a little bit, it's a little bit underexposed right now. So we can fix easily fix that. Let's just go over. We will bring, I personally love using HDR uh, because it actually, you can actually put in the gamma space and the blacks and the exposure can be raised based on the camera input. So this is one of the reasons why I love it if I wanna raise the exposure. So we're gonna just raise the exposure just a bit and I'm going to just lift these shadows up. And as you can see here, this is pretty good. So I just wanted to get that up, but so that's pretty good. Now we'll come back here. So you got input your gamma, you input your Vlog, 
And now what we have to do is you don't technically have to put it the color space because it's already in Rec. 79. I just for safekeeping, especially if you're trying to create a LUT, I like putting the output, which is 79, but as you see, it doesn't change anything. Here's where it changes, where you've got to go to Cineon Film Log. And this will bring here. And the reason why you need to have it in 709, because you can see here, Rec. 709 codec. So it has to have the color space, Rec. 709, Rec. 2020. Normally what people do is just make the second one over and then drop it. And it's, as you can see here, it's kind of punchy. It's kind of, a, it's very stark. And then what typically people do is, you know, reduce the effects by pulling it down. And then they'll come over here and raise, and raise the saturations. And then, you know, they'll sort of offset the color space. And like I said, as you can see right here, it really emphasizes the orange and teal. It's one of the reasons why Hollywood loves it. But I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not a fan of this, of this particular way. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete this. And instead, what we're going to do is we're going to create a layer node. So we're going to create a layer on top. And what we're going to do is now we're going to change the composite mode. And this is the key thing. We're going to change the composite mode to soft light. So this is going to create a, a blend that uh, I personally find very, very appealing. And you'll see why in a second. Now let's drop codec 2383 on the other layer, on the layer node, and there. And as you can see here, this looks way better. This is this is a way better, The con it's still punchy, it still has got that contrast, but, but that's codec 23. And again, you can change that where you can change the effects where either you want to dial the effect back if you want to in this key output, if you want to dial it down a bit. So you can do it this way. Or you can come, or let's reset the key output and we'll go to here and we can pull some of this contrast down. And then we can also then change things like the pivot. So open it up, maybe we'll bring it down. So everything sort of just feels more cinematic. Uh, we'll, let's look at our waveforms real quick, pull up our waveforms. Maybe I'll say, hey, I wanna add just a little bit more, so I'll drop the shadows. So I'll drop the shadows a little bit, but I'm, and then I'm gonna raise my highlights a, a bit just to add that curve, add more to that curve. See, and what you can see is when we turn this off, you can see before, where the log, and then after, before, after. So this is a great thing. And then as you'll see when I'll just, all I will do is just apply the same LUT here and voila, it looks fantastic. It looks great. And you can see, and what I love is just the texture and details. And the reason why I absolutely love it with the G86, especially if you got a great set of glass, like the Leica 10 to 25 F17, this, and even something like the Sigma 18 to 35, which is this. What I love about it is with the Panasonic V gamut and the full V-Log, there had this amazing tonal contrast that works extremely well. Again, again, maybe I want to pull some of this contrast back and just bring some of this contrast back. Uh, maybe I want to drop some of these shadows a little bit more. Or I can go to the HDR wheel here where I can be working with just the log. So I'll just pull some of these darks down just to give it a little bit of definition. But as you can see, this works great. And so if you want that as a film look, this looks great. But as I said before, there's also a second way that I love even better, and that is with Dehancer. Now this comes now with the latest uh, update that they came a while back, which is Dehancer 5. Now this is a paid plugin, but it's worth it. And you don't even have to use the full pro version you can get it with the light version and you can still do this as well. But if you are going to be interested in getting Dehancer, I do have a 10% uh, discount coupon that's in the description below, as well as you'll see the discount right here on the screen. Definitely check it out, use that coupon, and give yourself a little bit uh, cut off so when you buy this, and you'll see why this is an amazing thing. So I'm going to do things a little bit differently. I'm going to actually convert this to Airy. So I'm going to use the Color Space Transform. And I'm going to, and the reason why is because uh, Dehancer doesn't have a direct, um, a direct connection to this, but you'll see why this will work better. 
and I'm gonna convert this to 709, uh, uh, but then I'm gonna convert it to RA and I'm gonna convert it to RA log C. And now I'm going to go down to Dehancer, which is Dehancer. Right now I have Dehancer 5.3. Now normally when you do this, uh, you'll have this and it'll look uh, kind of crappy. Uh, I've already made, uh, basically, but you can turn all of these off. You can go by turn all of these off and you can get it. And I've already actually made a blank one so I'll add this right here. And as you can see, if I turn this on or off, nothing changes. You can look at the waveforms, nothing changes. Uh, I can open up the vector scope. As you can see, nothing changes on the vector scope. So basically it's a blank canvas, but I'm going to go to the source, choose camera, and I'm gonna go Ari, Lexa Mini, Loxy. And that is awesome. It transforms it right, right there, right into Rex 09, and it actually does a beautiful job with it. Uh, but let's get into the part right here. So this is the one of the big things that changes. So before here, there wasn't a profile or anything. Now, once I enabled this, they have a part called Codec 2383 Print. And I'll put that in, and boom, it automatically adds, adds it in. And what's cool about it is you could change your target white. So if you want to make, if you want to go for a more cooler one, you can or you can go with a warmer one. So that's awesome. And then we can and then we can change the total contrast so we can bring that down. We can also bring the exposure down as well. And what I love about it is it be it makes the changes in a in a print like format compared to the others. Same thing with here, which is one of the best things that I love about Dehancer is this color density. Because it doesn't work like saturation does or work like color boost where it sort of does a generic boost on everything. Instead, what it does, it impacts the colors that are in the sh the lower areas, so the middle gray and, and lower, and not as much for above middle gray highlight area. So it's a nice little thing where, because that's where most of the effects are. So as you can see here, it's not affecting the highlights that much, but it is affecting the skin because of where the skin tones lie. So we can really amp that up, and as you can see here, and then we, again, just like before, we can come here, we can go and pull this contrast down, and then we can pivot it, and then, you know, if we want to affect the highlights, I personally like it right now just for this demonstration, but the other cool thing is, they have something here called an analog source limiter. So if you wanted to get really like film where you don't have as harsh blacks, as you'll see here, everything's a little bit more flattened out so it, ha so it has that more filmic look. And just look how beautiful that is. I just love it. And then you can go ahead using all this other stuff like the grades and stuff and you can basically just get your grade uh, how you want to right here. So again, we can have it where it's just more like crut or the glasses crush, or you could have a little bit more natural like here. And then if I apply the same thing here, and we'll do, look at, look at the color, look at the color tones now of this. And we can go back here and then turn that off. And then you can see like all the blacks. Just look at the tonality of this. This just feels awesome. And if we use the same thing here, I don't think I I don't think I'll need this so I can turn this off. But you can see here. Look how awesome this is. But we can also still add this in so we can see the contrast and everything. And look, look just how nice that is. And then again, we can tame the analog off so we can really get those deep deeper colors and deeper blacks and boom. Look at that. Look how awesome that is. But this is but as you guys can see right here, this is one of the things I absolutely love about the GH6 is it has such rich colors and a nice tonal contrast that actually works really well, especially when you're using that dynamic range boost mode that helps you emulate film and going with Kodak 2383, it only amplifies that film look. So if you guys are looking for to make more cinematic looking experiences and cinematic looking films, here's a cool tool to have it. Either you could do it free in DaVinci or if you want to really just get more control and really take control of it, Dehancer, uh, you can use Dehancer, which is dedicated film emulation, and use that.
Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure once again to leave a like. The likes definitely help. Also, make sure to leave comments below to let me know your thoughts about this. And if you guys, once again, if you want to support this channel, leave a, leave a super thanks. We would love to have, hear from you guys. And if, if you guys leave super thanks, I'll definitely try to make dedicated videos in response to your super thanks as well. And so this way, this channel becomes more about, you know, content generated by you because you are the supporters of the channel. As always, until next time, take care, everyone.